LRQ dropped a serious container in the 3D printing world. The Centauri Carbon, a core x piece that promises speed, precision and power. Let's start with the unboxing. Printer was nicely packed, no damage. Inside the box you also find user manual and user guide. 4.3 inch touchscreen, power cable, filament holder, build platform glue stick, little bit rapid PLA plus filament, some tools, nozzle cleaning tool, USB memory stick and spare nozzle wiper, scraper blade and screws, and grease. Build plate is secured with three screws for transportation. Centauri Carbon is almost pre-assembled, you only need to install filament holder and screen. It comes with a double-sided build plate, one side is specific plate for PLA. Side spool holder is basic and easily accessible, filament sensor is on the side. At the back of the printer are two fans, one is chamber fan and second one is part cooling fan, boob shoot for phased filament. The setup is quite easy, at the first startup different checks and calibrations are done. On the screen is image of the printer and when you turn on the light it will also light up on the screen. Not a useful thing but it looks nice. The interface is similar to Pamble Lab X1 and KU2, is easy to use. Updating the firmware can be done through the touchscreen. When auto leveling you need to choose what side you are using, which should give better leveling results. Leveling takes about 20 minutes. Extruder is hardened steel, dual care, direct drive. Hot end is all metal with brass hardened steel nozzle. Max temp up to 320 degrees. It also has semi-automatic belt tensioner that effortlessly maintains optimal tension and reduces vibrations. Max printing speed is 500 mm per second. Build volume is 256 by 256 by 256 mm. But if you want to print max size, you will get collision error message. The error message goes away at 235 by 256 mm. The default slicer is Eleco slicer, it's based on Orca slicer. There are also chamber camera with light, you can use it to monitor your prints and also it can do time-lapse videos. As seen in the video, the light is quite bad and that's why the time-lapse videos aren't good. The noise it makes is mostly under 50 decibels when top lid and door closed and when opened 52 to 55 decibels. During the printing power consumption is mostly under 200 watts, some peaks are over 200. It has resume printing function when filament runs out. I got the filament to see how it works. Filament ran out, loaded new filament and printing resumed. This printer also has resume printing function when power failure happens. Printer started up and reminder of the uncompleted print came up. I hit the resume, printer homed X and Y axis and after heating it resumed printing. Is the cube when I tried resume printing. Lower line on the cube is when filament ran out and upper line power failure. When filament ran out it did leave visible line and the one blob. It's quite ok but the second one isn't good, layer shift happened. I think it's caused by the bug in the firmware, so it should be fixable with update. I did simple hotbed measuring and there seems to be quite same temperatures at different points. I did some different prints, some pre-sliced models from the USB memory stick 
and some prints that seemed interesting to try out with this printer. The first print was the flushed filament container looking like Centauri carbon. To print it, I used a Lego Rapid PLA Plus filament. It came out okay. The airlines differences little bit seen, but the text was printed quite well. The next print was the Eiffel Tower with small details. Usually FDM printers struggle to print it, but it came out perfect. All details printed without problems. The base model from the USB, not printed with base mode, quality is fine. The scraper blade and screws what came with the printer are for this print. Printed also fine without any problems. Elaku Puta model printed fine also. 3D Benchy printed 15 minutes, it's fast and the quality is good also. I printed this multi angle cube with different filaments. First one is PLA. They all printed with same quality, which isn't bad at all. TPU has stringing, but I use Telegoo TPU settings on Bamboo Lab TPU. Some lower temps and retraction settings changes will fix it. I only used Prim when I printed ESA. Without Prim, I didn't got good penetration. Next one is the Walter White print. It's printed with 0.16mm layer height. Came out good, except the glasses pieces came off with the supports. Chainmail is good print when you want to test petadation. It printed without any problems. This printer has very good petadation. I also printed one tolerance test and it came out better than I expected. Even 0.1mm is moving. Usually 0.1 and 0.15 is fused together. So that's the print quality I got. Better than I expected. I also have Bamboo Lab X1, so let's do a quick conversion. They are not exactly in the same weight class, but let's do it anyway. Some overall dimensions are similar. Centauri carbon as diecast aluminium frame and X1 welded steel frame. Printing speed is same 500mm per second. Both have auto leveling, but systems are different. Both have glass doors with almost same max opening angle. Both have glass top leads. Both powder tubes were rubbing against the top lead. Touchscreen is a little bit bigger on X1, 5 inches versus 4.3 inches. Interfaces are quite similar. Both have all metal hot ends. Max hot end temp is bigger on Elago 320 degrees and X1 300 degrees. Both have same size double sided build plates. The filament holder is on the side of Elago and X1 has it at the back. Both have chamber cameras and can do timeless videos. If you compare quality, X1 has it better. The chamber light is better on X1. Both have easily removable extruder front covers. Both have chamber fans with carbon filters. Both have nozzle cleaning systems with filament based outlets. Print quality are good on both printers. X1 can do multicolor printing with AMS and Centauri Carbon multicolor printing is coming in this year. The basics are quite similar on both printers, but X1 has a lead hour and AI detection. The Tauri Carbon is much cheaper than X1, but X1 has more features like leader, AI detection and filament drying. So, is the Lego Centauri Carbon worth it? If you are looking for speed, precision and reliability in a Core XY printer, this one definitely delivers. The price of this printer is 329.29 euros. I think its price quality ration is one of the best on the market. What do you think? Would you add this to your 3D printing setup? Let me know in the comments below. And if you found this review helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more 3D printing content. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.